Welcome back to Uprising. I'm Sonali Kolhatkar. Millions of Nepalese have been impacted by the magnitude 7.8 earthquake that hit the landlocked South Asian nation on Saturday. Initial estimates of the dead were 1,200, but that more than doubled to about 4,000 yesterday. Now, Nepal's Prime Minister Sushil Koirala has announced that the final death toll could reach 10,000. Bodies still remain trapped and rescue efforts are in full force. The earthquake triggered an avalanche on Mount Everest and tremors were felt in cities outside the country. Some remote villages as much as 70 percent are wiped out. Those living in homes made of heavy boulders were more likely to have suffered damage and death compared to those living in wooden structures. Hundreds of thousands of ordinary Nepalese are living on the streets either from fear of a major aftershock or from simply having lost their home. The public outpouring of financial support has begun, but funds need to be immediately mobilized to get help fast where needed. In countries as poor as Nepal, the aftermath of a natural disaster can be even more devastating than the actual event. My guest is Darius Teeter, Vice President of Programs at Oxfam. Welcome to Uprising. Thank you. Good morning, Sonali. Thanks so much for joining us. How important is the backdrop of poverty to the story of Nepal's earthquake? Would there have been possibly fewer deaths and less damage if the same magnitude earthquake had hit a wealthier country with better infrastructure? It's absolutely true. The correlation between poverty and suffering and disasters is well documented. And just to give you some statistics to put this in perspective, 55% of Nepalis live below the poverty line. And a typical Nepali has three years of schooling compared to 13 in the United States. We enjoy 25 doctors for every 10,000 people in the United States. The comparative statistic in Nepal is only two doctors. We have reliable electricity, excellent transportation and communications links, and perhaps most importantly, we have a government present in almost every level of the country. And the Nepalese don't enjoy any of those, of those luxuries, and that matters in terms of human life.